Hi guys, I'm Chris, and uh, welcome to Sharp Edge Woodworking. Sharp Edge Woodworking in HD, I might add. How am I looking? I'm looking nice. Sweet. So today we're going to make a mirror, or a full length mirror, to be more precise. To actually be more precise, we're going to make a mirror frame. I'm not going to make the mirror. I don't have like a foundry in my cupboard or anything like that. I'm not going to make the glass. I've got the glass. I'm just going to make a nice frame, and full length standing mirror. And it's going to be awesome. So now we've cleared that up, it starts with the drawing. Okay, so here's a little close-up of my drawing. I like to do a scale drawing um, before I start making anything. It just allows me to sort of see it and visualise it in real proportions. So what I've done here is I've drawn it at a scale of 1 to 5, so it's a fifth of its actual size. Um, and this just allows me to sort of see the overall height of my piece, the width of my piece, the dimensions of my timbers. I know where all my joints and my joinery are going to go, where everything's positioned. I can see where my rebate's going to go in. And then over here, what I've done is I've just exploded this area into a real size one-to-one -one skill drawing. And down here, I can sort of see a bit more clearly where my rebate's going to go. And then behind my rebate, where, my, where I'm going to allow for the glass panel and also a, a backing board. So by doing this, it just allows me to sort of see it, visualize it, understand it, and it's, a reference that I can come back to during the making process. So now I've got this, I can start um, machining my timber and getting these components together. Okay, so we've got our drawing. There she is. And now we're going to make this out of some nice, nice pine, nice tight ring pine. Uh, this is going to be a painted finish. So the surface isn't too important. It's not getting a fine stain or anything. But uh, we do try and want to get the best sides facing out kind of thing. So we're going to, we're going to sort of assemble this from the back. So what's on the bench is going to be the face side. So that's quite a nice side. And so is that one. And the other thing I want to bear in mind is that we're going to put a rebate in the back of this. So I can avoid these knots if I can. So down this one I've got a nice clean edge without any defects in it and the same there. So I can run a rebate down there really nice without hitting any knots or anything, any nasties. So we'll use those as our two sides. Our top piece, yeah that's definitely the, the, the nicer surface than that. So that can go on the front, that'll be the back. And kind of have that up there, so that's our header, and that one, again there's a few knots in that, but we won't see those, but as far as the rebate goes, that's a nice clean, clean edge, so I'll have that, we'll have some feet on the bottom, so that'll go about there, so it'll kind of go something like that, and what I like to do is, Take a marker or a piece of chalk, and I'm just going to run a colour along those edges. So that, that is where my rebates are going to go. Okay, so we've now got, kind of got an orientation of how we're going to do this. And that's what it's about, it's just about sort of thinking it through before you actually do it, just, and it makes life easier on yourself, so you don't sort of come into problems later down the road. So now we've kind of got it established of where things are going to be, we can start getting on with setting out and marking out the positions of our joinery. Let's do that next. Okay then, so before we start doing any marking out joinery wise, so what we're going to do, we're going to do mortise and tenons. Now if you could use, um, just make a simple frame with 
your pocket screw, pocket oil jig or something like that, or maybe bridle joints or I like Morris and Tenon, so that's what I'm gonna do. Now, two ways of doing that really. You could just do regular Morris and Tenon to connect those, cramp it, glue it together, and then come with a router and put your rebate on your inside edges. That's one way of doing it. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run a rebate right along our our side pieces. Uh, I'm going to use hand tools today. I'm going to use the, the rebate plane to do that because I had a 12 inch pizza all to myself last night. And I need the exercise. So we're going to do that first. And what we're going to do is you need to know what rebate you're putting in. So. So because this is the back, so if, say that's obviously a very small piece of glass, but my glass is going to drop into the back like that. So I basically just want a 10mm lip for the glass to sit in, so I'll just mark that with 10mm there. And we're going 30mm down. These are 45 by 45s, so I'm going to turn the alert, so I'm going to thirty mil there. So now we can set our rebate plane or your router fence or however you want to do it. So you know where you're going. Okay, so we'll get rid of that. Uh, we'll start cracking on. We're putting the rebates in these things, so we don't need the top and the bottom for now. Um, what should we do? We'll start with this one. So I need to be that way. Where's my dogs? Rebate plane, this is a rebate plane. Old school. And what you do with these, you start at the end and you work your way back. Don't come over here, go and try and take a grip and gouge out of it in one go. You'll struggle. So you start at the end and work your way back. And we just double check. There you go, turn mill. Yeah, measure twice, cut once. Just getting that first, that first position established, and then life starts getting easier. Getting easier now. We've got a we've got our rebate line established, and it'll be a bit untidy. But I've done it slightly undersized, so I can come back afterwards and clean that up with uh, a rebate block plane. So that'll be lovely. So uh, I'm going to carry on with this. And I'll see you soon.
So we're now at 30mm wide by 10mm deep, or well, there or thereabouts. Just needs a little bit of cleaning up in the edges. So we'll grab a rebate block plane and we'll just give it a couple of gentle shaves. Run that down that first, cleaning it up. Right, well done. Well, I'm knackered. That was hard work. I'll tell you what, whoever invented this thing hates hands. It's just horrible to use, it really is. Even the handle, the bit that's supposed to be comfortable, is just hard and cold and digs into your hand. And this side of it, there's just nothing to press on or push against. It's just all lumpy and gnarly. It's just awful. So if you're thinking of getting a rebate plane, this Stanley 78, I at your own risk kind of thing. It's, ugh, just don't like it at all. I mean, I've got to be honest, I haven't used that for a long time, long, long time. And I can't see me using it again anytime soon. Certainly not on anything as long as this. Um, on the plus side, what's not horrid, what's very, very not horrid are these things. My Quenchang shoulder plane and my Quenchang uh, rebate block plane. Brilliant bits of kit, love them. This thing's awesome. I've been through these group, uh, these the rebates here, lovely and clean, lovely and square, great bit of kit, love those. So those, we like those. I was going to go back up there, love you. Love those, that, not so much. Um, right, I'm going to go for a cup of tea and then we're going to come back and start marking out some mortars and tenons. So I don't go anywhere. Right, okay, so I've maxed that out. Hopefully you can see that. See in there, that's where my mortise will go. And that is exactly the same size as the chisel I'm going to be using. So we can just blast that out and the chisel itself will make it the right width. And we make the tenon to the same measurement. Now, so as you can see, shoulder A down here, we'll call this shoulder A, is more this way because shoulder A there is also more this way. Shoulder B up here is more that way because the material on there is further that way. So it's pretty self-explanatory and the, the, the difference between the two is that distance of the rebate. So that's how it kind of works. I'm going to chop these out and see if they fit nice and snug. Right, so I'm going to start by chopping out this mortise and we want to go about 20 millimeters deep which will give us enough for a nice length tenon to um, give us enough strength holding this all together. So we start at the edges and work our way in. My chisel is exactly wide enough for the mortise itself so I don't have to faff around there. Start gently and work your way down.
Okay, so now let's get on with cutting our tenon. So there we go, we've got our tenon marked out, and as you can see there, we've got our stepped shoulders. So the first thing we're going to do, we'll get that wax in the vise. Got that. And we're going to do our cheek cuts first. So we're going to rip right along that. So we'll have our nice big tenon saw. And just keep your blade to the outside of your line. Because I've got stepped shoulders, I only want to go as far down as the highest shoulder. Don't worry about this side. So we've cut the tenon out on all four sides, now we'll cut the cheeks off each end. Um, let me bring you down this end. Alright, we'll pull that away and get the cross cut saw. There we go. to do now is lose that piece and that piece. Right there, so we just need to knock these off and bring the tenon out. So we're just going to follow this, this shoulder line right down. I'll stay slightly off it, again, so I can clean it up afterwards so I don't put any marks or damage this shoulder. So I'm just staying slightly away from it. Yeah, I was afraid that might happen. 
on, I can't reach it. I'll just have to get the big fella. Not designed for cross cutting that one, but there we are. Only a little bit. Right, and we'll clean that face up. And we'll just do the same on here. So it just needs a little bit of clean up work, I'll get on with doing that and we'll come back and slot it together. Awesome. Okay, so I've just sort of uh, fine tuning that tenon, it was a little bit fat, so I've just been taking a little bit of material off there, just to uh, get it snug. If you've seen me using this, can you see that? Can you see how the blade goes all the way across the sole? It's not a regular block plane, that's a rebate block plane, which allows me to get right in against the shoulder and take off material the full width of that tenon. So, just in case you're wondering, that's not a regular block plane. But now we're done, let's see how we fit. So, I'll grab that one, uh, that way. Uh, yeah, just a little bit of resistance, that feels nice. It feels nice. Let's have a look. Beautiful. And as you can see, I've already done the other side. So we'll just pop that on. Give it a little squeeze. Nice, nice, nice. Okay, so as soon as we glue that and squeeze it, any little cracks will disappear. It's almost perfectly flush. On the face, you just need a little wipe over with the smoothing plane. And if we flip this over, like so, and I grab my ruler and measure my inside distance. My glass is uh, 390 mil wide, so I am ever so slightly. Over 390 wide, I've got a couple of mil either side to flavor, so my glass will drop in there with a little bit of room to wiggle. Happy days. So what I'll do next is I will measure the length of my glass going that way once I can establish its final position. I'll repeat the same process as we've done with the top rail on the bottom rail with the steps, shoulder tenons, mark those out and we'll come back when it's all sort of ready for dry fitting and gluing up. Stick around. Alright guys, there we go, so there is our frame, I've glued it all together, I've kind of spared you that part, it's, uh, you know, you've seen stuff glued together before. So, there's our frame, we've got a nice wee bit in there, and that's kind of it from the front. I've changed the design slightly, I'm not going for a rounded top anymore, I'm keeping it square, I'm going to put just like a, a moulded crown uh, head piece on the top, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that will be that. So I've got my glass over there, but just to save possibly damaging it, glass will go in. Then I've got a backing board which will drop into there, and then we've just got a, a support beam which will screw in from either side and just sort of secure it in place. I'll pop a couple of supports in the corners as well. Now, the next thing we need to get on with is making the leg assembly which will attach to this with a couple of hinges and it will allow the the frame to adjust to various angles when it's stood upright. So we'll get on with doing that. So let's get this out of the way. And I've already prepared my timbers here. So it will kind of go like that, like that like that and like that and you get the idea so this is just going to be another simple mortise and tenon frame and I've already marked out the positions of my mortises so we will crack on with marking these out now these these timbers here are 22mm thick 
So the general rule of thumb is to work on thirds. Shush. Um, to work on thirds. So 22 divided into 3 is about 7 and a bit. Now, I haven't got a 7mm or an 8mm chisel. The best I've got is a 10. So I'm going to go with 10, which will leave me a 10mm tenon and mortise and 6mm material either side. Which again, this isn't taking great strength, so that should be enough. That's about as far as I'd be prepared to flex that kind of rule of thumb of thirds. So, just because I've got a 10mm chisel, that's what I'm going to go with. So, I've got my marking gauge, and I've set that to 6mm. So, we'll go 6mm from each side. There. And there. Which will leave me 10mm in the middle. So, let's just mark all these out. Okay, done and done. So now we'll get on with chopping these out. And I think I'll do them all at the same time. Okay, so there's my four mortises, they're all done, looking nice. Now we need some tenons. So, let's brag them and stick out there, 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 and there, and there. Now we've still got our marking gauge set at 6mm, so we'll use that. Now I know the ends of my stock here are perfectly square to the rest of the, uh, the timber, so we'll do 6mm. Either side. That'll give me the thickness, the same thickness, tenon to mortise. Okay. And I can run that down the sides. Actually, no, we should have one side for now because we don't know how long we need to be. So I'll just do one end. There. 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 And there. Now, my mortises are about 22 mil deep, somewhere thereabouts. So we're, we was aiming for a 20 mil tenon. So we'll just reset that to 20 mil. And then we can scrub our shoulder lines. There we go.
you see that? And there's our tenon. Right, so we get ourselves a bench hook. And a cross cut. No, let's do cheeks first. Cheeks first. Come over here. waist side of your line because we want these tenons to be a little bit fat. You can always trim them down later. Carried away and go all the way through. Okay. Bring you back over here. Hello. Like I think my shoulder's a little bit fat, so but I'm not too concerned about that. I'll get the shoulder plane out and knock that down. There you go, that's kind of just in the right area of tightness. And without any 
any great tweaking that's kind of already in the right area so again we'll, we'll just adjust that and we'll just uh, fine tune it a little bit and that'll fit nicely I'll get on with doing the rest of these and we'll come back when that's all done oh, I think my glue's gone a bit gloopy, I'll have to get a new one it's like cottage cheese at the moment See how we're doing for square. So, um, six sixty six to there, and six sixty two to there. Not good. Alrighty then, there is my completed leg assembly, nice and square, nice and smooth, I've been over it with the sander, it's lovely, it's ready to go. I've already marked out um, hinges, which I've already attached, and I have also marked out where they're going to go on our frame. Now just bear with me, I've got to be really careful, I don't want to, there's no way it really can fall out, but I don't want to damage the glass at this late stage, that would really really upset me. Okay so we are, this is the back of our frame again, I'm not showing you the front just yet, you'll have to wait. So there we go, so I've got my glass in, I've got my MDF backing board in and I've got a batten which I've attached just with a couple of pocket screws and that just basically secures the backing board and the glass in place. If you ever crack the glass you can simply undo these screws, remove that, replace the glass, good to go. So. That acts as a anchor point or a pivot point for our leg assembly, which the other flap of the hinge screws into there. As I say, I've already marked these out, or just uh, just one screw on each side for the time being. completely flush and parallel with the side of the frame all the way down and the same on that side. Now if your frame's not square and your legs not square you'll have trouble sort of getting these lined up across the length. As you can see as we, we kick that open it just starts to bite. Now as you can see I've kind of just put a little round over on this point here that just allows it to clear and once it reaches the sort of side of the frame it starts to bite and it won't go any further. And by the time I've got the extra screws in those hinges that'll be nice and secure. And like I say, basically only just to just to hold it in place just as a stand. So that'll be fine. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get on with the screwing in the rest of these hinges. I'm going to make just a little simple crown for the top of the, the frame just to hide the just to hide the joinery on that. 
and just make it look pretty. And I'm going to take it all to bits and paint it and pimp it. And it's going to look awesome. So stick around and I'll show you it when we're nearly finished. It's starting to look like a mirror. Okay guys, so there we go. All finished, what do you think? Looks nice. I think she looks beautiful. <coughs> so that's my project for you for this time. We did most of it with hand tools. Not especially hard or difficult. We started with a drawing, which kind of gives us a good starting point to mark everything out. It's all about marking out. All it is is basically a couple of square frames. It's not rocket science. But um, if, you, if your marking out's good, your frames will be good, and it'll all come together nice. So yeah, just a few hand tools. Um, all apart from that little coving uh, detail we did up there, I did that on the router table, but um, hey ho. Now, um, back to my drawing. I did, I did originally intend to do this with a curved, curved top, just because I wanted to incorporate some kind of some element of curved work in one of my videos. But um, when I thought about it, I didn't really feel it suited the piece in my mind. So. I changed that halfway through, but the actual positions of my joints are all where they would have been anyway. So, even though I kind of altered that halfway through, my drawing was still accurate as far as the joinery goes. But um, I'm quite glad I did as well. I think it looks a lot better with a, a square square profile. Well, that's, not, that's just me. You might like the curves. Hey, we'll do curves next time. Or sometime. I can't promise. Um, so what did we learn? We learned a little bit about uh, drawing, we learned a little bit about doing stepped shoulders, we learned that the Stanley 78 rebate plane is an absolute pig and we don't like it. Um, and as I've just had a look in this mirror I've learned I need a shave because so I'm starting to look like a hillbilly. So that's on my to-do list tonight. Um, so yeah, just a couple of frames. A bit of paint, I put a transfer on there that says you look amazing, because I think we, we all do. We need to stop reading these celebrity magazines that tell us how we're supposed to look and what we're supposed to do and, you know, define just the way you are, so... I thought, I just thought it was a nice touch. So I'm quite pleased with how that's turned out, I think it looks cool. And... I'm calling that done. I've got flies, I've got insects on my stuff. Get off. So, um... As I recorded this video, I realised that I've done quite a lot of long clips, so I've got a feeling when I come to edit this, this is going to come in quite long. Now, some of you may like the long style, some of you may not. You know, I've kind of done it on purpose, really, to sort of just allow me to watch the process as I do it in sort of real time. Um, just if you like that kind of stuff, great. If not, 
you know, I can't promise all of my videos will be like that. You know, some will be long, some will be short. I just, I'm, I, I kind of fly by the seat of my pants, if I'm honest. But um, I hope you watch it. I hope you leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Uh, that would be awesome. So for the time being, I hope you enjoyed this one, and I will see you again soon.